Hello. Can you hear me? Me again. <laughs> Hands up if you're a developer. Well, according to the next speaker, your job might be automated away. If the end of hand coding is nigh, where does the future lie? With AI, of course. Uh, want to learn how software 1.0 1, 1 plus software 2.0 plus AI equals software 3.0? It's a bit of a puzzle, but to make sense of it all and explain how AI will decode software for everyone, please welcome the CEO of Outsyst OutSystems, Paolo Rosado. All right, so what I'm going to talk about is slightly technical, but not that technical. This word, this sentence is a very famous word, software is eating the world, and it's true. As we deal with uh, thousands and thousands of customers of enterprises around the world, what we've seen is that the number of new mobile applications, web applications, backend services, all the coalition of things that need, to be do, uh, that need to be done to create a digital platform is just increasing, and the backlogs are increasing. Now, software is not developed by everyone. It's, de it's developed by developers, and developers are a special breed of people that have special type of skills. Now, the software development process has been evolving very, very quickly over the past years, but fundamentally, the basics are still the same. Developers need to understand the intent of what needs to be built as software from users. We call these getter requirements. Then they develop the software, they test it, they put it into production, and then it gets used. And if you backtrack to 15 years ago, it was okay to take years to do this. So this process, a one year and a half, 18 months, should have been was actually a very fast process. Now, if you take the last 15 years, what's been happening is the demand for such a huge backlog and immediate gratification has been pushed people to demand software to be delivered in days, but more important than that, it needs to be changed in minutes. And so this has created a huge, huge pressure on developers and on tool sets to be able to help developers become more productive. That's the bottleneck today. The bottleneck is in talent, as in almost everything. So that's where AI, we're seeing the first steps of AI helping in this process. And um, <clears throat> just to get an idea of what is the maturity level of the software development process supported by, uh, by AI or by machine learning, based on large data sets. Um, David Tarlow at Google Brain created this a simple maturity model where at the top, we have AI being used as core for real use cases. In the middle layer, we still have, a, we still have some work to do, but there's already some indication, little demos and features that are crippling up in a lot of places or in some cases, nothing to show, that the research has not produced anything. And so at the top, you guys are the proof. You can see the proof of AI infused into a lot of these areas. For instance, speech, you see it in Alexa, you see it in the way we talk with cars today, images, text. Software development is basically breaking it from stage one to stage two. So it's a very, very early uh, area of development for AI. Now, the, the thing that's becoming a commodity is when you build an application that has inside AI features. It might look like the development of that application was done through AI, but it wasn't. We're really just meshing normal software with AI-based services. So an example, for instance, is if you are a user of Google Mail, for the past six months, you probably start seeing 
more and more intelligent features creeping up in Google email. This one here is a lifesaver for me, which I have a difficulty in answering back to every email I receive. And so by examining the context of what a particular email, it infers what is a possible answer that I should be giving uh, someone. And this is part of the large research that's being done on natural language processing by Google. Another example has to do with AI applied to image recognition. This is an example of an application we built on stage that included an image recognition service from uh, Azure that allow us to, instead of having to search for a product using a catalog, it allow us to take a, a picture of a, a sample of the product and immediately get a suggestion of what we need to put in the shopping cart. And that particular one is a little plushy we had on stage to do the demo. So that's not AI-powered software development. So what is AI-powered software development? There's a lot of areas that are being done, a little, little snippets and things creeping up with AI, AI being used to transform dra uh, sketches of web pages into real code, things like that, a lot of research on testing. But what I'm going to talk about is how bots can help developers create software. And that area is the most crucial and most fundamental in AI-powered software development. So what are we talking about here? Well, the process of developing software has to do with the creation of code that's written, instructions that are written in, in languages, programming languages, not natural languages, but programming languages. And the combination of all of this is what we call source code. And the work of a developer is really the one of creating that source code, making sure it fulfills the requirements from the user, making sure it's correct, performs well, and then later on improve it and change it. Now, one of the areas, the most interesting areas of help of these bots is the capacity, increasing capacity of an AI bot to look into the source code that's being written, infer the context of what the developer needs and then propose a particular snippet of code that he can put inside uh, the source code as he's programming. Okay, now, where does this thing come from? All modern AI today is based on big data, on large data sets. And so what we do is we typically look into very large quantities of source code. We detect common patterns we also have stored a lot of the evolution of that source code so we can detect when things were A and then they became a little bit different. All of that is fed into a machine learning model and that's where we created a bot that as it looks into what the developer is doing is kind of saying, oh, I have 84% confidence that the next thing the guy needs is this particular snippet of code. And that's what gets proposed. And this is already reality. For instance, this is an example of uh, uh, a development environment from Microsoft using, uh, using research done by the Deep Code uh, team, where the stuff that you're writing, this is actually Visual Studio, the stuff that you're writing is basically, as you write, is proposing more and more and uh, snippets and patterns so that whenever you write, you actually uh, fast forward and you become way more productive and, uh, and concrete. Now, this is, as you can see, this is very, very small, right? These type of snippets are very small snippets. This doesn't really move a lot of the needle, but it's already a big help. Now, this type of technology can be used for other use cases. You can imagine, for instance, that as the developer creates the full software, what the bot does is is constantly looking over the shoulder like a, a senior mentor, low over the shoulder, hey, I think there's a bug there. So when, and that bug is basically based on, on the same model, the same large data set that we've seen, uh, that we've seen before. Now the next step into this evolution is when the confidence in what the bot is 
looking and the bot is thinking is that the bot goes and changes the code itself. And we are right at the cusp where that research is being done. On, for instance, not producing software from scratch, but evolving software so that it becomes better, more correct. And so what it means basically is that without the intervention of a developer, the bot can actually go and change the software. And a breakthrough was crossed this past uh, couple of months where a bot, an AI bot disguised as a software developer, managed to actually successfully upload code into GitHub, into some of the projects, and basically be good enough to pass the muster of the project managers of the open source uh, projects that were being done. It's very early. There's a lot of research around this, but you can see where this thing is going. Now, at OutSystems, we are, our business is the automation of the software development cycle. And so about, uh, we've been fiddling with AI already for three years, but this last year we really went uh, very serious, creating a very large group. We are one of the 50 research groups around the world that exchange ideas on how we can improve the process of, uh, of software development. Now, what is interesting here for us is when we look into the next step, there's a lot of challenges. This is where things are starting to become really complicated. Because in order for us to have software that produces uh, in order to have bots that produce software, they need to actually understand the intent at a larger degree and create not only snippets of code, but really complete templates and architectures of the overall end goal, the overall application. Today, that role is being done fundamentally by humans. It's done fundamentally by developers. But as we grow and we evolve, the capacity, the sophistication of these bots is increasing to a point where the roles get reversed and the development is actually done by the bot with the guidance and control of the developer. Now, one of the issues with this particular scenario is that the complexity and the sophistication of what is delivered by the bot starts becoming so, uh, uh, so high that fundamentally at a certain point, the developer starts understanding what is being done. And this is a very important step because up until now, what we have is bots assisting developers. And so developers have the last word in what is the code that gets created. What we see here is that we actually are more or less controlling things, but we are abdicating of the control of the exact architecture of the software that's being produced because that responsibility is now at the bot, at the bot level. And so what is our role here? Our role becomes one of uh, really understanding the intent, of understanding the users, of communication, and then directing the bot to do the grunt work. And this is what we think is going to fundamentally things will stabilize. Now, there's a lot of people that believe, and this is the catastrophic evolution of where these things are going, they believe that eventually the role of the developer will vanish. And what we'll have is we'll have AI bots that fundamentally automatically get usage data from how the users use the applications. They get, they understand the intent and for all purposes change the software automatically. From a point of view of all of you, for all of us, what does that mean? Are we programmers now? Are we developers? Well, what do you have now? You can imagine that you have an application running on your mobile phone, and as you, you drag around and you complain, oh, God, this is slow, the bot behind you is listening and is making the change and saying, is this better? And so for all purposes, you start looking at these applications as being almost life forms where the code morphs, the, the code that's behind it is being morphed as the usage progresses. And so a lot of people believe this is going 
This is getting into the singularity, the catastrophic nature of AI building new AI and as a new life form creation. And actually, but actually what we see and seeing the, the joy that we provide when we, when we can get people to produce things better, to get more automation into stuff, I choose to believe that what we're doing really is removing the grant work and leaving aside the creative work and the capacity to enjoy life. Not only enjoy life, but enjoy life with a good glass of wine. Thank you.